Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for being at this talk. My name is uh, Ayub Amil, and today I'm going to be talking about a paper uh, I've been working on with Professor Yahua Wei and Professor Ali Makhtoumi from uh, Duke University. The title of this project is uh, Multi-Item Order Fulfillment Revisited, LP Formulation and Profit Inequality. Let me first start with the motivation behind this project. So retail e-commerce has been growing very fast in the past few years. For example, e-commerce sales in 2022 were about 1 trillion in the US and about 9 trillion worldwide. Because of this rapid growth, an increasing important question that companies like Amazon or Shopify or Alibaba have, um, have to answer is the following. How should online orders be fulfilled upon arrival? So this is going to be the main research question that we're going to be uh, trying to answer in this uh, in this paper. So this question has been studied by uh, many researchers in the field. And here I have a brief uh, literature review. As you can see, uh, there are mainly two streams uh, of work. Um, there are some papers that uh, work uh, in what I call here single item order model. And here what I mean by single item order model is that each order has a, a single item. But what we're going to be focusing uh, on in this talk is the multi-item order model. So we're going to be assuming that each order has uh, can have uh, multiple uh, items. And in particular, we're going to be um, working in the so-called competitive ratio analysis and the papers that more closely align um, to ours are the ones that I uh, listed here, Jesin and Sinha 2015, Wilma uh, 2023, and Zaretol 2022. So I'm going to go uh, more in detail about the comparison uh, of these papers uh, with, uh, with ours, but what I want you to um, take away from this talk is that online fulfillment lies in the general area of online resource allocation. And I hope that this talk will motivate some of you that work in the online resource allocation to apply the techniques that I'm going to be uh, showing you here in the context of, uh, of fulfillment. So this is the outline uh, of the talk. First, I'm going to be going over uh, the model and uh, our main results. And then I'm going to give uh, more details about uh, our fulfillment policy. So as a warm up, let me start with a simple illustration of our model. So suppose we are an online retailer and we have four warehouses here indexed by one, two, three, and four. And suppose that we can receive orders from anywhere on the screen. For example, today we receive an order for a pair of sunglasses and a watch. Upon seeing this order, the online retailer has to decide how to dispatch this order using the facilities uh, that we have, the four facilities. One way to do this is, for example, to use what I call here method one, which basically fulfills the entire order using facility number three. Another way in which we can do this is to uh, use met method two, which fulfills the entire order using facility one, or we can also use try to fulfill this order using a combination of facilities. For example, we can fulfill the pair of sunglasses from facility one and uh, uh, watch from, uh, from facility two. So in this particular example, there are actually five to the power of two possible ways or methods to fulfill this uh, particular order. And five, because we have four warehouses plus the option of not fulfilling some of the items in the order, and to the power of two, because the cardinality of this order is two. So hopefully this gives you an idea um, of why this problem is hard. There are a combinatorial number of ways in which the online retailer can uh, fulfill this order, okay? So let me briefly go uh, over some of the uh, notation that we use in this paper. Here, I denotes the uh, item type, little k denotes uh, the facility label, little q uh, will denote the order type, which is characterized by the composition of the items in the order and the location, because of course, um, an order for a pair of glasses and a watch from California is different than 
the same order from, from New York. And finally, we're gonna uh, use little m to denote uh, the method type. And you can think about these uh, methods as the ones that I showed you um, here in this, uh, in this simple illustration. So let me briefly go a little bit more in detail about uh, the model. In this model, we assume that we have T periods with independent and stochastic uh, order arrivals. And we assume that at most one order type Q arrives in each period. Not that this assumption is without loss of generality, because of course we can always uh, consider finer time steps so that this uh, assumption holds. Moreover, we also uh, assume uh, by default that an order contains uh, one or uh, multiple items. And when method M fulfills a specific order type Q, um, we use the notation M squiggle Q. And when M fulfills order type Q, we incur unit cost CM, okay? So note that to make this uh, in this to make this problem meaningful, um, because of course we can always simply not fulfill an order and just lose the order. To make this problem meaningful, there is always we assume that there is always a method that allows Q to be lost, meaning that we assume that there is a method which is do not fulfill order type Q, but if you decide to use that method, then you're going to incur uh, the maximum possible cost. Okay? So this is another assumption that we make in our paper. We also assume that facility K uh, initially holds uh, SIK inventories for uh, item I. And given this setting, our goal, our objective is to minimize the total expected cost. Okay? So this is, uh, this is our model. Let me now go over the details of the performance measure that we use uh, in this paper to evaluate the performance of a fulfillment policy. So the performance measure that we use is the so-called competitive ratio. And what is the competitive ratio? The competitive ratio is the ratio between the uh, expected cost uh, of a fulfillment policy here denoted by A compared against the expected cost of the offline solution. And I'm gonna go more in detail um, about, uh, in a few slides, about the offline solution. For now, you can think about this offline solution as the solution to the problem in which uh, you already know the entire sequence of order arrivals. So using this performance measure, let me now compare uh, our paper to the existing paper uh, in the literature. So as I mentioned, Jesse and Sinha 2015 is the uh, first uh, seminal work to uh, study this uh, general setting. And the authors in the paper provide a fulfillment policy that has a competitive ratio that scales linearly in the cardinality of Q max, where here the cardinality of Q max uh, denotes the maximum order size. And note that the authors work in a uh, in the so-called fluid setting, fluid uh, scaling regime, which is the regime in which both the time horizon and the inventory are scaled to infinity. More recently, Wilma 2023 uh, improved in the same uh, in the working with the same framework, improved this competitive ratio to log uh, of Q max. And another, another paper that is related to this is the one by Zhao et al. Uh, 2022. But uh, in their paper, the authors work in a setting in which they only have two facilities and they provide a fulfillment policy that achieves a competitive ratio of two. But um, their, uh, their policy not only works uh, with the stochastic, in the stochastic order arrival, but also in the adversarial uh, order arrival. So compared to these papers, our uh, result, our main result is the following. So we provide a, a, a fulfillment policy with a competitive ratio of one plus kappa times cardinality of Q max divided by square root of S plus three. So let me unpack um, this ratio here. So kappa here, you can think of it as a constant that denotes the gross profit margin. Q 
Qmax again, the cardinality of Qmax again is the uh, maximum order size. And little s here uh, is the minimum uh, inventory level across uh, item types. And note here that this is a competitive ratio that holds in the non-asymptotic uh, regime, meaning that uh, not we, we do not only study the so-called fluid scaling regime. But of course, in the fluid scaling regime, if you uh, scale uh, the inventory to infinity, in this case, little s to infinity, uh, we can prove that our procurement policy is actually uh, asymptotically optimal. Okay. So this is a brief summary of our model and our main results. Let me now uh, give you more details uh, about uh, our fulfillment policy. So our fulfillment policy consists uh, of two ingredients, an offline process and an online process. In the offline process, you first formulate and solve uh, an LP relaxation of the offline problem. And remember that the offline problem is this problem where you assume that you know the entire sequence of order arrivals. Once we have the solution uh, to this uh, rel uh, relaxation of the offline problem, uh, we start the online process. And you can think of the online process as uh, as the process that starts when you start when you start receiving orders. And when you start receiving orders, what you do is the following. So for each arriving order, you first randomly draw a fulfillment method for this order based on the offline solution that you uh, already computed. Once you draw this uh, method, you are going to determine whether to accept or reject this method for fulfillment, okay? So there are two steps in the online process. You first draw a method, and once you draw that method, you decide whether to accept or reject this method. Next, I'm going to... Uh give first more details about the offline process and then uh, talk about uh, the online process. So let me first focus on the offline process. So as I mentioned in the offline process, you formulate and solve a relaxation of the offline problem. And this offline problem, uh, again, you can think of it as the a problem in which you know the entire sequence uh, of order arrivals. So here, um, what I'm showing you is a relaxation of this uh, offline uh, problem. And in particular, uh, let, me, let me go a little bit over the constraints and the variables and the uh, objectives. So the decision variables here are these, uh, are denoted by XMTs, uh, which we can think of as probabilities of using method M for the corresponding uh, order type Q at time T. And the constraints that we have are these two. Basically, the first one ensures that um, we fulfill uh, every order. So here, PTQ is the uh, expectation of a binary uh, random variable um, uh, denoting the arrival of order type Q at time T. And the second constraint is simply the inventory constraint. Basically, it says that in expectation, we cannot use more than the inventory that we have. So remember that um, SIK is the inventory for uh, item I from facility K. And finally, the, uh, the objective is simply the, uh, the expected cost. So one first thing that you uh, might notice is that this formulation, given this formulation, um, our uh, relaxation has a large number of decision variables. And indeed, compared to the offline relaxation of JSON and SINHA 2015, you can see that uh, the number, our number of decision variables um, is uh, exponential in, in Qmax, where Qmax is um, the, the largest order size, okay? So the way we deal with this, uh, with this large number of decision variables is to uh, basically 
consider the Lagrangian relaxation of this um, of this LP. And basically, we we use Lagrange multipliers for the inventory constraint. Once we uh, consider this Lagrangian uh, relaxation, uh, you can notice that these uh, these Lagrangian decomposes across orders, and because it decomposes across orders, we can simply solve smaller LPs. And in principle, we can solve these smaller LPs uh, in parallel, making it more efficient for us to find um, an optimal solution that here I denote by uh, X star. So there is a way to uh, to obtain a solution, even if we um, use this um, alternative formulation. So the the benefits of using this uh, formulation is that um, I'm going to try to convince you that once you have this formulation, we can obtain a better fulfillment policy and a tighter lower bound on the offline objective. But not only that, given our formulation, we also can allow for a more general cost structure because here we're uh, only using CM to denote the cost associated with method M and we're not making any assumption on, on this cost, okay? So this is what concerns the uh, offline process. Assume from now on that we can solve this, uh, this uh, relaxation of the offline problem. If we can solve this, the next step is to go over the, uh, is to adopt the uh, this online process. And in this online process, as I said, we have step one and step two. In step one, if the arriving order is of type Q, we sample a method for type Q with probability specified by this ratio. And not that the, in this ratio, we uh, we are using the, uh, the solution from the uh, offline process. Once we determine, uh, once we draw a method for uh, order type Q, in step two, we determine whether to accept or reject uh, this method. And how are we going to determine uh, this exception, the, uh, the accept or reject decision is by doing the following. We're going to be applying techniques of the magician problem, uh, which was introduced by LA 2014. And in particular, this will allow us this will allow us to create a policy that for any method at any time, if sampled, is going to be accepted with an ex ante probability of at least gamma. And this gamma uh, we show uh, that can take the form of one minus cardinality of Q max divided by square root of S plus three. Okay. So basically we leverage techniques from the magician problem to allow for any method to be accepted with an ex-ante probability, which is high enough. How high? As high as the gamma that we specify here in this, in this slide. Okay. So let me give you the details about, uh, of, this, uh, of this policy. So this policy is a magician-based uh, policy, which we call magician-based gamma conservative policy. So basically for each pair i, k, where i is the item and k is the facility, we compute a one minus one divided by square root of s i, k plus three conservative magician policy. And remember here that s i, k is the inventory for item uh, i, uh, from facility K. Once we do that, what is the uh, accept reject policy? The accept reject policy is the following. When method M arrives uh, at time uh, T, for each pair IK in the method M, you determine whether IK is made available by using the policy of magician IK. And once you do that, you accept method M if and only if every magician IK in the method M 
uh, made their inventory available. Okay, so this is the accept rejection policy. And we can formally prove that this magician-based policy is a gamma conservative policy where this gamma um, is equal to one minus cardinality of Q max divided by square root of S plus three. So this is the uh, accept rejection policy that we use in, in, in this is the, these are the details of the accept rejection policy that we use in step two. So finally, using uh, combining the offline process and the online process, uh, what we can prove is that our policy achieves a competitive ratio of at most one plus kappa times uh, cardinality of Q max divided by square root of S plus three. And again, just to briefly summarize, uh, in the in our fulfillment policy, which is um, uh, depicted here in the in the first box, we first solve a relaxation of the uh, offline problem, and then using the solution from this uh, relaxation of the offline problem, in the offline process we first sample a method according to this solution, and then we use in the second step we use a magician based uh, gamma conservative policy. Okay. So this is all I wanted to say for uh, to today's talk. So concluding, what we show in this paper uh, is to provide a fulfillment policy with uh, a competitive ratio in the non-asymptotic setting for uh, multi-item fulfillment problems. And in particular, the way we do this is by combining uh, probabilistic fulfillment with the magician policy so that we can derive non-asymptotic competitive ratio. We also show how we can solve our method-based formulation using uh, a Lagrangian formulation. And after considering our Lagrangian formulation, you can see that the Lagrangian decomposes across orders, and then you can use any type of um, method to efficiently solve those LPs. For example, we show how to do that using uh, a subgradient method. And finally, uh, we show that with a, even an approximate offline solution, if you're not able to exactly solve for the, uh, for the uh, approximate offline solution, our policy still, uh, still applies. So this is all for today. Thank you so much uh, for your attention.